This is the homework for 761, 62, and 63 B and C. In problem 761, you need to graph the points in the table and draw a line. Then find three different ratios to describe the slope of this line. Well, here are the points in the table. Now we're going to graph each of these points on the line, 0, 1, 0 on the x, 1 on the y. Next one is 2, 6, 2 on the x, 6 on the y. And I would graph the rest of these points. And once I have these points, I connected the points with the line. Now I want to find the ratio of the, sl the slope of the line and show it in three, different, um, in three different ways. So one is from this lattice point to this lattice point is 5, rise 5, run 2. So 5 over 2. So a slope of 5 over 2. And remember, m represents slope. And y equals mx plus b. The m is the slope. So that's one. Another ratio is I can choose two different lattice points. And this one is rising 10 over 4. Well, 10 over 4 simplifies to 5 over 2, or 5 halves. And then the third one, I'm choosing these two lattice points. And this one is rising 15 and running 6. So it's 15 over 6. And 15 over 6 also simplifies to 5 halves. So all three of these have um, the same ratios when they're simplified. So these three um, growth triangles are similar triangles. Their corresponding sides are proportional. In problem 762, you need to find the slope of each line. So in order to find the slope, I need to look at the grid lines and find where the line intersects those grid lines. And I see a point of intersection here here and here. These are called lattice points. So when um, I find the slope, the rise over the run, I'm going to start at this lattice point. One, two, three. So I have a rise of three. One, two, three, four, five, a run of five. So the slope is three over five. And I can choose any two lattice points. One, two, three over one, two, three, four, five, three over five. I could also choose this lattice point and this lattice point because this is a rise of six and a run of 10. Well, six tenths simplifies to three fifths. On the second one, I have a lattice point here and here. It's the only place, the only two places on this graph that the grid lines, the line intersects the grid lines. Here, it looks like it does, but it's a little bit above. This one's a little bit below. Um, and the only place that it intersects those grid lines is here. So I have a rise of six. Now, it looks like it's 10 units over, but you have to pay attention to the intervals here. It's every two represents one unit. So it's a rise of six, and then one, two, three, four, five. Six over five. For the third one, it's a rise of one, two, three, and a run of one, two, three. So it's three over three. Three over three is just one. Or I can choose these two lattice points and it's one over one. And you, again, you have to pay attention to these intervals. It's 
every other box is one unit. So it's one, and then the x values are going, one box is one unit. So rise one over one. Um, a very common mistake is to say the slope of this is two, one, two over one, but you have to pay attention to these. In 763, you need to solve for x. So we want to get x by itself. So we need to um, eliminate this 3 in the denominator um, in one way is by using uh, the fraction buster. So we want to distribute a 3 to all three of these terms. So when we multiply, 3 multiplied by 1 third, 3 divided by 3 is 1, multiplied by 1 is 1, so that's 1x. So we distribute it to the first term, so we get 1x. Then 3 multiplied by negative 6 is negative 18, and 3 multiplied by 8 is 24. Now, inverse property of subtraction is division. I mean, inverse property of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 18 to both sides, created a zero pair. And now we have 24 plus 18 is 42, and x equals 42. Now, to check your answer, what you would do is put um, substitute 42 in into your back into your original equation and one third of 42 minus 6 equals 8. If you don't get that when you substitute it back in, you made a mistake somewhere so you'd have to go back and check. For C, we're going to use the fraction buster method to eliminate the denominators and we want to multiply by the least common multiple of 3 and 4. And the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. So we're going to multiply every term by 12. So we have, um, for the first term, we're going to multiply. And we're just going to do 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 multiplied by x is 4x multiply or distribute to the second term, 12 multiplied by 1 is 1, and then we have to do it to the other side, distribute this to the first term, and again we're going to um, divide, 12 divided by 4 is 3, multiplied by x is 3x, and then distribute to the second term, 12 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 12. For those that are understanding how I'm doing this, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and then um, 3 multiplied by x is 3x, I can show you over here. So if I'm going to multiply 12 multiplied by x over 4, it would look like this. 12 multiplied by x over 4. And I'm going to write 12 as a ratio over 1 because anything divided by one is itself. That's the um, identity property of division. So, so anything divided by one is itself. It's the identity property of division. Um, it'll equal itself. So now if I multiply, or I can cro um, cross simplify first. So four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three. And so that's what I was doing here. 12 divided by four is three, and I got that there. And then three multiplied by x, and that's what I was doing here once I divide it. Three multiplied by x is three x. And then 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, so we just end up with 3x. And then 12 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 12.
subtract 3x from both sides. That creates a zero pair. 4x minus 3x is x. Now we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. Um, inverse property of addition and subtraction created a zero pair. And negative 12 and negative 12 is negative 24.